thank the Lord for another opportunity to be a thank you the Lord for us again tonight. Amen. We're glad for each and every one of uh, you all that has come out to be with us tonight in the house of the Lord. And we pray God's blessings over, over His precious and holy word tonight. Amen. Because without his word, I don't know what we would do. Amen. 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 So you pray tonight that God will just lead us and guide us and uh, show us what he wants us to do tonight. We're going to be back in uh, the book of uh, Revelation Amen. tonight. Amen. Chapter number 16. Amen. I, I believe we're now in verse number 13. Amen. Amen. I just want you to uh, listen to the reading of God's Word. I mean, it, uh, we've, we've been trying to study all this for the past two or three days. Every time I get back there and open up the Bible, uh, I get sick. And so sick on my stomach, I can't hardly stand it. When I get up, I walk away from it and get away from it for a little while. And uh, same like my stomach can clear up, I go to feel better. And I'd go back and sit down in the office again and open it up to the book of Revelation and begin to read. And I heard come again. Amen. Every time that I try to uh, study and teach the book of Revelation, it seems like I have trouble. Amen. I, I get sick as a horse. Amen. And, and it's the old devil. He don't want what is being taught, taught. Amen. He wants, he wants his stuff kept a, kept a secret. Amen. So really pray tonight that God will have his way in everything that is said and done. I, I want to say one thing tonight. Several, several years ago, I, I've had this in my Bible. Matter of fact, I've taken this out of the past three Bibles that I've had and always put this in the one that I carry. <coughs> But there was a survey taken several years ago, and it asked people's opinions. Now, boy, I'll tell you what, that's, that's what God has blessed everybody with. Everybody's got an opinion. Amen. 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 And, uh, so they asked the, the people about uh, uh, who all believed that they was a heaven and who believed that they was a hell, who believed that they was a devil. And uh, it came back years ago that 90% of the people believe that there's a hell. And if you don't believe that, you just watch around these funeral homes and watch how they host stuff. I mean, people ain't never been to church in their life and ain't never claimed to have anything whenever they die. Come on, family will get on our head and gain another angel. Uh, amen. amen. And they didn't even know what the inside of the church house looked like. So everybody, about 90% of them, believe that they was a hell. Uh -huh. Amen. Now, when you get over into hell, only 73% believe that there's a hell. That's out of the 90. Out of the 90%, it dropped that much. And then when he got down to the devil, only 65% of them <coughs> believed that the devil was real. Amen. They believed in everything else, but they didn't believe that there was a hell, and they didn't believe that there was a devil that was going to take a fire. And I can only imagine what it would be like in this day and time if we would take the same survey, amen, as they took back then, the numbers would probably be lower now than what they was then, amen, amen tonight. So uh, I just wanted to throw that in there. But in Revelation chapter number 16, and going to be down in verse number 13 and verses number 14, amen, it may be cover a little bit of 15. Amen. But I want you to listen to the reading of God's Word. Let us pray. Father, dear Lord, it's again God that we come to you with thankful hearts, thanking you, Lord, for this day, thanking you, Father, for another opportunity and another privilege, Lord, of being in your house and 
God, we ask you tonight, Lord, that you would just help us, Lord, as we go through, Father, this precious old book. And Lord, we pray, God, that you would lead us and guide us in the ways, Lord, that you would want us to go tonight. And Father, we pray tonight, Lord, that we just might be mindful, God, of the Holy Spirit of God. And Lord, what it tries to teach us. And Lord, we pray. Father, if we've done or said anything throughout this week that would hinder this in any way, Father, we pray tonight, Lord, you'd forgive us of it and pull us up close to the cross and God make preaching or teaching easy. And Lord, help us, Father, not to say anything, Lord, that's contrary to your <coughs> word, but help us in all things, Lord, to stay in your holy and precious word. And God, that we might leave out of here tonight saying that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And amen. And God, just have your way. And Father, we'll praise you because we ask it all. In Jesus' holy and precious name, we do pray. And amen. And amen. I, I couldn't help but whenever I began to read this, uh, thinking of Brother Jackie. Woo! There goes the frog. Amen. <laughs> amen. Because it's talking about uh, uh, the frogs in here tonight. And he said, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now listen to verse number 14. For they are the spirits of devils. Amen. Now you notice that uh, whenever he was a, uh, a talking up in verse number 13. Amen. But when he falls into verse number 14, he pluralizes it. Amen. For they are the spirit of devils working miracles which go forth unto the king of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Amen. Verse number 15. He said, Behold, I come as a thief, and blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Amen. I believe in verse number uh, 13 tonight, whenever he said that the unclean spirit was like frogs. Amen. He didn't say they was frogs. But he said they were like frogs. Now, if you remember the message that Brother uh, uh, Jackie yeah. preached during this revival, that they regarded the, the frogs as a type of God. Amen. And, uh, so that is what this is referring to tonight. And it's also referring to the trinity of the devil. Amen. Just like you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You got the devil, you got the Antichrist, and you got the false prophet. And all of these three make up the trinity of the devil. You got to realize where you're at in Scripture tonight to fully understand what is going on. Because here, there is no Spirit of God to keep everything in order. Amen. Here the devil is having his leeway upon the earth. And more or less, he's the one that is in charge. Or he's the one that thinks that he is in charge. Little does he know the battleground is being set for that great war. Amen. But it's God who is preparing the battleground. It's God is the one that dries up the Euphrates River. Amen. And He allows the demons to go out. Amen. And possess these kings. And He encouraged them to come to war against God Almighty. Uh, brother, I, I tell you this evening, there is a lot more people in the world today that will encourage you to do evil than they are to encourage you to do good. Amen. There are more folks in the world today that will draw you away from the house yeah. of God instead of drawing you to the house of God. 
There's a lot more people today will talk about the things of this old world instead of the things of God. And why is that tonight? It's because of the demons, amen, that, that is possessed in this land. Amen. Now demons have to have a place to live. Amen. And they live in people. Amen. And if, and if you know somebody that is not serving God, Amen. They have an evil spirit about them. It doesn't matter how good of a moral person they are. It doesn't matter how good of a name they carry. If they do not carry the name of a Christian, amen, they bear the, uh, the evilness of the trinity of Satan. Amen. We gotta, you got to remember, number, number one, Satan can make his uh, uh, make his face anything that he wants it to be. Amen. Uh, the Satan uh, can change himself. If he showed himself as the devil, everybody in the world would run from him. Amen. But he doesn't do that. He uses the things of this old world and he disguises himself. Amen. Tonight, and boy, I tell you what, you don't really realize what you got a hold of till you get it. Amen. And sometimes when you get you I would pray to God that you'd never got it to begin with. Amen. Because it is filled with the evilness of God. I want to share some things with you and that I jotted down about the devil. Amen. And I want you to listen to these and then we'll, I believe they'll fall right into the scripture tonight. Amen. Number one, the devil is dangerous. Amen. It don't matter whether you believe in him or not. He is a dangerous character. Amen. He's already lost his place in heaven. Amen. He was one of the highest angels that they were in heaven. And Isaiah said that God just moved him to the earth. Amen. And we studied that in the book of Revelation how that the devil was cast out of heaven. Amen. Listen tonight. The devil don't never take a break. He works 24 hours a day. Amen. He works seven days a week, 365 days a year. Amen. He's always about doing his job. Amen. His job is to deceive. His job is to kill. His job is to lead astray. His job is to rob you of the blessings, amen, that God wants to give you. His job is to make war against Almighty God because that's who He wants to be. Amen. He wants to be the one on the throne. Amen. Giving, uh, uh, giving all the praise and the honor and the glory. And here, amen, this is His last and final charge. Amen. Uh, to try to take over Israel and to sit on the throne and to be God Himself amen. impersonating Himself amen. as the Lord. The devil, he's dangerous. Amen. He is dangerous. He's dangerous to the sheep. He's dangerous to the church. Amen. Because he can change himself into so many forms. Amen. The Bible said in Corinthians that he can even transform himself over into an angel of life. Amen. The word you look up on it and you'll think it's the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen in your life. The devil has that capability. Amen. And today, thank God, we see people come into the church. Amen. We see them come in for a while. We see them get their feelings hurt a little bit. Amen. And they take off and they go down the road. Amen. To somewhere else. Listen to that. If they go to somewhere else, that's fine. Amen. I don't have a problem with them. You've got to be careful. Amen. Tonight. Boy, I'm telling you what, the old devil gets up on a Sunday morning. He looks in the mirror. Hey Amen. He'll take a razor and run down his face. Uh, put a little bit of deodorant in under his arms. Uh, uh, throw a little bit of aftershave lotion on. Uh, uh, put on a suit. Put a tie on. Uh, hey Amen. Tonight, grab a Bible. Uh, that's God's holy word. Uh, and head out uh, uh, to the house of the Lord. Hey Amen. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. Watch some of it. Uh, hey Amen. And you'll learn. Uh, I'm not real quick. Uh, it ain't everybody that stands. 
hands and behind the pulpit and is called right. of God. A lot of them are called of the devil. Amen. Yeah. You say, preacher, how can you tell the dead? Stay in the book. Amen. In the book ain't never going to lead you wrong. Amen. The book will always give you the truth. But the devil is dangerous. Amen. The devil's dangerous to this church right here. I've seen, I've seen over the past five years. Amen. I've been here six years in June, right? Amen. Uh, and I've seen the devil. Amen. Work. Amen. I've seen him. Amen. Tonight, boy, I'm telling you what. Have you ever looked into somebody's eyes and just seen the demons and dancing? Amen. Tonight, boy, you know what? Amen. I've done that one time. You know what I've done, Brother Eddie? I run. Amen. Amen. I run. I was as close to that as I ever wanted to be. Amen. Listen tonight. The devil has that power. He's a dangerous foe. Uh, Peter said tonight in the book of 1 Peter, he said the devil as a roaring lion walking about the earth seeking whom he may to devour. Amen. The devil's a lion. Brother, I tell you tonight, you say, preacher, well, he don't ever bother me. Well, Maybe he already got you. Amen. Listen tonight, because if you are on the winning side, I guarantee you tonight, he is after you. Amen. The devil's Amen. dangerous. Amen. The devil is dangerous tonight. The devil is a great pretender. He's a great pretender. I tell you what, I've been doing this for almost 42 years. Amen. I've seen him come. And I've seen them go. Amen. I've seen preachers pick up the Bible. Amen. Tonight, and they stand and they preach. Amen. And boy, I've seen them lay, in the, lay the Bible down and walk off from it and never pick it up again. Amen. I, I've seen preachers. Amen. Tonight, get so, in, in it so much over their head. Amen. Tonight, that they just give up. Amen. I've seen church members, deacons in a church. Amen. And I used to be deacons in the earth. I was talking to a lady the other day. She said, well, I used to be a Sunday school teacher. Amen. I said, guess what? Whenever we get to heaven, God ain't going to base us on what we used to be. Amen. What are you now? Amen. Are you acting in the service of the Lord? Are you acting, amen, tonight about doing the things of God? Listen tonight. The devil is is a great pretender. Amen. Listen, boy, I tell you what, the devil can't ever harm the church until he gets inside the church. And if he gets inside the church, he ought to come in on somebody's back. Amen. Amen. He's got to be in somebody to get in. We're no match for the devil. Peter said, the Lord, I will go with you all the way. And, and the Lord told him, said, Peter, you ain't no match for me. Amen. The old devil will shift you up as sweet and spit you out. Amen. You're no match for the devil. The only hope that you have tonight is staying in the arms of Jesus. Right. Amen. You know how that you know how the devil got to the place that he's got to? Amen. In the book of Revelation, because he a great pretender. Amen tonight. He pretends. Amen tonight. He, he, he's he's, uh, he's done got the kings over on the his side. Amen. He done went in. He done wiped out of that kingdoms. Amen. And he set up a rule over these kingdoms. Amen. And boy, they're afraid of him. Amen. Tonight you get a person in power. Amen. Tonight sometimes they can be dangerous. Amen. If you don't think so, just look at the United States. We're in a mess. Amen. Tonight you got to be careful. Amen. And that's what the devil does. He come and he got himself in power. Amen. And he made himself as God. And people from all over the world, they flocked them to him. Amen. Tonight, listen tonight. I had a person to tell me, I, I, I said, uh, they told me, they said, guess what, preacher? I, I said, I seen Jesus. Amen. I stood there for a few minutes, but I looked at him, I said, you don't want. <laughs> they said, I seen Jesus. I said, you may tell me you've not already died and come back. <laughs> they said, oh no, said, I seen him in a vision. 
-hmm. Listen, uh -huh. you got to be careful. Uh -huh. You got to be careful of that stuff. Hey man, there are demons floating around all over the United States. If you don't believe it, you look at our society. If you look at our world, how dangerous it is. Hey Amen. America's in a bad shape when our schools that are supposed to be teaching our children turns into war zones. Yeah. Hey Amen. When you put them on the bus in the morning, you don't know whether you're going to get them back off of the bus in the evening or not. Amen. Look at the gangs throughout the United States. Amen. The blacks against the white. Amen. Tonight, look, look at all this mess. Amen. Amen. And you say, preacher, well, that, well, that's government. No. And his demons. Amen. Amen. And his demons. And his are running wild in our country. Amen. The Bible even tells us about demons. Amen. You remember this one in the Scripture that was club full of demons. Amen. And God come unto the man. Amen. And boy, I tell you what, the devil, he didn't have any, he didn't have a bit of trouble in the world recognizing who God was. Amen. And I, he said, oh Lord, don't do that. Don't do that. Amen. And God called the demons out and the demons run into a herd of swine and the swine run down Amen. into the river and they all perished. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. There's demons everywhere. The devil is a great pretender tonight. So you're looking at somebody that knows God's word inside and out. He knows the Bible better than you and I will ever know it. He done already forgot more of the Scripture probably than what we'll ever know. And He knows how to use it. Amen. And He knows how to use it. He knows how to lure somebody in. Amen. By giving them a little bit of the Word of God and just pulling them in and pulling them in. And then when He gets them where that He wants them, Amen. Tonight, then everything else breaks loose and you're in a trap that the devil has said. Amen. There are traps all over of the United States. Amen. Tonight, first great thing that the devil done, amen, is he got all these other versions of the Bible. Amen. Put out on the market. Amen. Tonight, King James is about a thing in the past. If you got one, you better hang on to it. Amen. Amen. I don't know how much longer they're even going to make it. Listen tonight. The devil is a great pretender. Number three, he's a liar. The devil will promise you everything and anything. So what? If you got a job making five thousand dollars a week, and you live in a and, and you live in one of the most beautiful mansions that they are, and you drive one of the finest automobiles that's ever been put out on the market. And then the devil gets you in that vehicle taking you down the road and you crash and you get killed. What's all this stuff worth? It ain't worth a dime. It ain't worth a dime. Amen. But what did the devil do? He lured you in with all of that stuff and then used that stuff to take your life. Amen. And then you wind up in hell and the devil's laughing about it. Amen. He is a liar. He'll tell you God won't send you to hell. Amen. Tonight God says that if we don't live for Him, we're going to hell. If we're not saved, we're lost. Amen. Tonight and the devil will pat you on the back and tell you how good you are. Amen. God will tell you you're righteous. He's a stealthy man in the sight of God. And I'm the only one that can help you. And my name is Jesus. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And boy, the old devil said, well, you don't really need that. And God said, if you don't have it, you ain't going to make it through. Amen. The devil is a liar and the father of it. The first lie told in the Bible. Genesis chapter number 3 was told by the devil. That's what he's doing here in the book of Revelation. One of the rivers that ain't never run dry. One of the rivers that always in the spring overflowed the banks. And people had to move to higher ground all at once. All at once, God drive this river up. Amen. He didn't mess with the rivers that flowed into it. He didn't mess with the rivers that was formed coming out of it. He just messed with this one river. 
Amen. That ought to be a sign for anybody. Amen. Hey, I don't mean to go there. Amen. God dried that valley up. He dried that river up. Amen. That is creating the valley. Amen. And boy, the old devil now, he, he's smart in one way, but he's as, uh, an idiot in others. He's seen that valley. Amen. Dried up. He said, oh boy. Here's my chance. Here's my chance. The only thing I got to do, I got to convince all these kings, amen, to come together with me and we can go right down the Euphrates River, amen, and invade Jerusalem, invade Israel, amen, take over the city, amen, and the devil said, and there's my throne and I can sit in the midst of it. Little does he know, amen, that God is preparing the end for him in that dried up river, amen, that I Boy, I tell you what, it ain't only the armies uh, uh, that is going to be coming from the east, amen, and coming from the north that is going to gather in the valley, but there's one, thank God, uh, coming from the east, amen, uh, and that's the army of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's a coming down and back. Uh, and I'll meet in the battle, uh, and I believe God will look at the devil. He said, I told you, uh, I win this thing. Your days are numbered. Amen. And it's sitting up right in front of our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. It's sitting up right in front of our eyes and people still don't believe it. And people still get the get their imaginations of running wild. Hey, Amen. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I used to drink. I used to drink real bad. And boy, I'd get off from work and it'd be hot outside. And I'd be going down the road and about the first billboard I'd see, amen, would be a, a woman sitting there in a bikini, amen, holding a good ice cold beer. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you back then, that just done something for me. I said, I just got to have one of those. Amen. And I'd stop on my way home and I'd pick me up a couple of six packs. Amen. And I'd take them things home. Amen. I'd sit there in the recliner and I'd drink those things. Amen. Sometimes I'd wake up of a morning. Amen. Having one almost in my hand laid there in the recliner where I done passed out. Amen. And get up. Amen. Take a shower. Amen. Smelling like a brewery. Amen. And head it off right back down to work again. Amen. And come back in home and do the very same thing all over again. If I had all the money that I had spent Amen. down through the years on liquor. Amen. And on beer and on alcohol. Amen. I'd have enough money to buy anything I wanted to buy. Amen. It drained me of everything and I had, amen, how the devil painted that picture for you, amen, I'm going to show you something, the devil painted that picture for you, he doesn't show you the back side of that, right. amen, the back side of that picture is little kids that don't have no food on the table. Little kids that's going to bed hungry. Right. Little kids that don't have no shoes to put on their feet. No coats to put on in the winter time. It doesn't show you a marriage that is falling apart. And the ones that are hurting more than anybody is the kids. It doesn't show you that part. Amen. The only thing that it does, it shows you something to entice you. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you, alcohol and drugs has run more homes in our country than anything else in under the sun. <laughs> Amen. Because they'll put you to where you are financially drained, you're financially tight. Amen. And the, and the only thing you want is more and more and more of it. Amen. Tonight, buddy, I'm glad tonight. Thank God that one day I 
I've seen another picture, amen. I've seen a picture of a man hanging off the cross, amen. Amen. I've seen a picture of the blood amen. coming out of the side of his face or running down his cheek. I've seen the blood touching the ground. Amen. Tonight, and boy, in that picture, I've seen how much that he loved me, amen. And boy, when I come to him and I knelt down and he saved me that night, he showed me what was on the back side of that picture. Amen. Hey man, and boy, I fell in love with it. Hey man, on the back side of that picture, he showed me families that would be put together and they'd never be separated anymore. He showed me a land where there'll never be another graveyard. There'll never be another headstone. There ain't gonna be no more funerals. Hey man, he showed me a land. I thank God where God himself. I said, I'll wipe the tears out of your eyes. Hey man, and I'm gonna give you something. I'm a shout about all the way home. Hey man, tonight, listen tonight. Which road are we walking on? The devil is dangerous. Amen. He's a great pretender. <coughs> He's a liar. There's situations in your life. There's situations in your life, and you know deep down in your heart that it's not right and you still don't do nothing about it. It's cause the old daddy has got you convinced that everything's all right. Sometimes when the devil tells us that everything is all right, it means we got a lot of stuff that's messed up. I'm going to give you this, just, just, and I'm not even going to charge you for it. <laughs> the Bible says to let not your good deeds be evil spoken of. Now if you take that and you break it down for what it's worth, it doesn't mean that you have to be doing anything wrong. Now you get where I'm going. It doesn't mean that you're guilty of anything. What it does mean is that you're giving the devil an opportunity to use what is in your life to let other people talk. You say, preacher, that's just not right. I'm going to tell you something. That is just right now plain scripture. That is just right now plain Bible. It's just like me going into a beer joint and parking my car right in front of the beer joint, and I'm going in there to get somebody out before they get themselves into trouble. I've got every good intention in the world of going in there and helping that person. And I can go in there and help that person and bring that person out and help that person. But if somebody sees my car parked at that beer joint, they don't care whether I'm in there drinking. They don't care whether I'm in there helping somebody. The only thing they're going to do is they're going to shatter my testimony all to pieces. Amen. Amen. And I might have the best intents of my heart. Listen tonight. We got to be real careful about our testimony. Amen. And if you're doing anything in your life that even gives the devil a little, little bunch, you say, man, but he can start a rumor about, stop it. Get rid of it. It ain't worth it. The devil will cause you heartache after heartache after heartache after heartache. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. People trying to help somebody else and ruin their life. And they've never done a thing except trying to help somebody. 
you got to take the Scripture for what it says. Let not your good deeds be evil spoken of. The devil uses them to his advantage. Amen. And boy, I'm telling you what, tonight he'll have a, he'll have a hay field. Amen. He'll do a wonder on you. He'll do a work on you tonight. Listen tonight. And number four, we have to be watchful. Be watchful tonight. Be concerned. But you know what kind of attitude we have tonight? Well, if it's a hurting anybody, it's only hurting me. That's a lie that come right straight out of hell. If you got something going on, it's not only hurting you, it's hurting everybody around you. Grow up. Take responsibility for what we need to be doing. Take responsibility for our actions. Amen. I, I tell you what, here, here a few years ago, well, at least me and Sarah were years ago, I got a phone call one day. The phone call was accusing somebody of doing something. And I said, really? I said, you serious? And they said, yeah. I said, well, let me ask you a couple questions just to make sure I get all this thing right. And they said, okay. I said, have you seen it? Well, no. Have you watched them? <coughs> well, no. I said, then how did you know? And when that person gave me that answer, I lost. I mean, I about fell off of my stool. I was sitting there in the office. And I'm telling you, whenever they give me the answer they give me, I mean, I thought, man, I've been on this earth for 65 years, and I ain't never heard anything like that before. I said, that's about the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. But it was something the devil was trying to use. See, you don't have to give the devil very much. And that's what he was urging these kings to do. These kings had went so far to where they was in under his power. You go so far, you're in under the devil's power. You might start out. How, how many times do we, how many times have you done something and God telling you don't do it and you go ahead and do it anyway? Amen. And then you wind up being sorry. See, the kings, <coughs> they had been already entrusted in the devil. They had been already entrusted in them little old imps that are running around. Don't you know tonight that you got something living on the inside of you if you're not saved? I'll tell you right now, if you open up my heart and look down into my heart and you can see a spirit, you see the Spirit of God. Amen. I'm walking right around in there. If you're not saved tonight, you got them little imps just to run it everywhere. Amen. You say, preacher, what is that? Them little old devil demons. Them little old spirits of the devil. Them little old demons that put them little old ugly thoughts in your head. Put them little old ugly actions into your life. Causes them little old nasty words to come out of your mouth. <laughs> Amen. And people say, well, it's a habit. I just ain't quite broke yet. Grow up and get over it. Amen. Let God help you. Amen. Send little imps. Just running around. And if you're and if you're a child of God tonight, you got imps running all around you. 
Amen. They're imps tonight. Set it in hell, wonder. How in the world are we going to trip up that preacher tomorrow? Amen. What can I see in his way? That'll make him lose his cool and to get mad and to blow up and to say something he know he won't never get over. Amen. And I, and the old devil's are laying out a plan of attack. Amen. Plow where it's slip. How in the world am I going to slow him down? Lord, only thing he wants to talk about you. Only thing that he wants to read the Bible. He don't know like to watch a soapbox that much and so I can't get him watching anything dirty on it. Lord, what in the world am I going to He don't even like my country music anymore. Boy, I got to come up with a new plan. I got to come up with a new theory. Listen tonight. It ain't only me. It's every one of us that are saved by the grace of God. The devil is done already making plans Amen. on how he can make your life miserable. Amen. Little did these people know, I'll just tell you this and then we're going to close. Little did these kings know that the devil was getting ready to lead them to their destiny. Little did the kings know that whenever they walked into that valley, First of all, they never was going to get to Israel to begin with. Second of all, they wasn't coming out of the valley. And third, their bodies was going to feed the vultures and stuff of the air. But the devil had them convinced, we can do this thing. We can do this thing. We can be victorious. And they followed him right into death. They followed him right into their final hour. I can only imagine, I can only imagine what the kings must have felt like sitting in that valley, getting ready to make an attack on Jerusalem. And all at once they hear a noise coming out of heaven. And they looked up and there come one sitting on a white horse that had a multitude of armies behind him. They may come and to give an attack on them. They didn't stand a chance. I can imagine. And old King said, yeah, we followed the devil. We followed him. And he led us right down to death. Listen tonight, the devil the devil won't leave you alone until he can drag you through the doorway of death. Because when he takes you through that doorway, he knows there ain't a thing in this world that God will do for you. Because that's, you're, it's over. It's history. Once that devil gets a hold, boy, he clamps on with everything he's got. You remember that message about a snake? Mm -hmm. How that snake will reach out with them heavy jaws. And, <clears throat> and when it gets their prey, they say a snake has got so much pressure in their jaws that whenever they close them jaws up, it just squeezes the life out of their prey. <clears throat> and that's what the devil does to us a lot of times. Boy, we'll be going along and all of us just... <clears throat> Boy, he got you. And he just begins to squeeze. And he just begins to squeeze. But there's a way we can get loose now. There's a way that we can get help now. Because there's one that can lever them jaws open to where we can get out of the grasp of the old devil. But in this day, that grasp is a deadly grasp. What a picture. What a picture. I hope and pray you got something out of this tonight. I hope and pray that, that it stirs your heart. I hope and pray that God just God just talks to you. Amen. I, I pray that God blesses the church. I pray that God keeps the church safe. Pray that God adds to the church as He sees fit. Amen. And I pray that we as a family of God 
and stay close together and help one another. I need you. I need you. But most of all, I need him. Amen. 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 And I hope and pray to God y'all need me. Amen. Because if you don't, I'm in trouble. <laughs> but listen tonight, the final hour final hour. <coughs> Have you ever seen somebody in their final hour? <coughs> when they know they're going to take that last breath. I've seen them sit right straight up in the bed and smile come across their face. And I've seen others grab a hold of the bed and nothing but fear just come over them. Listen tonight. If the devil's on your trail tonight, and the devil's been fighting you are late tonight, I'd say come and get some help. Come and get some help tonight. Come and get some relief. Amen. From the one that is able to help you tonight. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And listen tonight. Let's live our life. Live your life. Live your life to where you don't give the devil that opportunity to say anything to match. Live your life to where the devil ain't got no room to talk. They may live it right at the foot of the cross. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Every head bowed, every Christian man and woman praying tonight. If you're here tonight, you want to come and pray. The altar's open. Anyone else tonight before we go to the Lord in prayer? Father, dear Lord, tonight, God, as we come to you, Lord, as simple as we know how, Father, we come to you, God, thanking you for tonight, thanking you, Lord, for your precious and holy word. God, we ask you, Father, through the name of Jesus tonight, Lord, that you would help us tonight, Lord, to be the Christian, God, that we need to be. Father, we pray tonight, Lord, for these one, God, that are gathered around the altar. We pray tonight, Lord, for their souls. We pray, dear God, for their lives. We pray, Lord, for their commitments, God, that they have made unto you, Lord. And Father, we just pray tonight, God, that you'd help each and every one of us, Lord, be that light shining in a dark place, Lord, showing somebody, Lord, that we've been with this man called Jesus. Father, how we thank you tonight, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, God, for watching over us. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us. Thank you, God, for keeping the enemy at bay. Lord, we pray tonight, God, that you just fill each and every one of us with your goodness, with your mercy, and with your grace. And God, how we love you tonight, Lord, because you first loved us. And Father, how we praise you, God, for everything that you've done. And Lord, Father, just go with us tonight. Lead us and guide us and direct us, Lord. And Father, in everything that is said and done, God will not fail. Father, to bow our head to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, for we ask it all in Jesus' holy and precious name we do pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.